uh, Blockchain Consultants and uh, Blockchain Weekly. Um, this is a weekly forum where we get together, we form a group, we form a huddle, we try and talk a, a little bit about what's going on in the week, what's going on in blockchain, what's happening in cryptocurrencies, and boy, what a week it's been. Um, uh, you know, cryptocurrencies are blowing up right now. Um, we had uh, a, a, a Sunday, we had the, the basically the opening of the futures market for Bitcoin. Um, Monday or Tuesday, we had the SEC release, uh, you, know, you know, the first real official stuff that I've seen about what they're going to do and how they're going to treat ICOs. Um, you know, there's a little bit of cautionary t tale there about ICOs and about um, making sure that uh, you're either registered, which they did come out and say, no one's registered. Uh, zero, not one, not, not even one has gone to the SEC at this point. Interesting comment. Um, and uh, the the token, uh, making sure that it's a, if it's a, uh, a utility token and it really does a utility and it's in it, uh, then the, uh, you know, that's that's not their bailiwick. They're, they're going to stay out of that, it looks like, from what I saw on the paper. So interesting stuff that's going on. Um, uh, the, the equities continue to go. Ethereum was at like, I don't know, $700, something like that. Um, and uh, a lot of a lot of people are saying that it's going to go, you know, a little higher before uh, the end of the month. Um, you know, the other big guy out there, Bitcoin, continues to just be blockbusters, blockbusters, blockbusters. But enough about ICOs. Today, we want to talk about really the blockchain um, and keep our, our our focus on smart contracts, uh, Ethereum, uh, what that does, how that helps businesses. Uh, and what's coming. We believe that if, if you projected in 10 years and you said, okay, um, what's the value or, or, or what's the market capitalization of uh, all the smart contracts? Of course, you can't do this, but if, if you could say, you know, what's the value of all the smart contracts, it's going to be a big number and the value of the coins is actually going to be a smaller number. So there's a, a bigger uh, play here in smart contracts, helping businesses uh, become more efficient and in transferring trust, uh, because that's what the blockchain really does and does well is it uh, it's the internet of value and it transfers trust. And that's kind of a, the segment that I kind of come on and uh, and talk a little bit about who we are and what we do. Uh, I want to get Robbie uh, on the um, uh, on the board here, uh, and uh, just a quick quick little uh, segue while he's coming online. I want to say thanks to Mike and to Shindig. Uh, this is a great environment. Uh, you guys, while we're talking, you can see that uh, Robbie and I are on the stage. Um, all of you can hear us, uh, I hope. If you can't, then um, uh, you, well, if you can't, uh, I, I couldn't give you instruction sets on, on how to get out of that. So um, I, I hope that you'll get that fixed. Um, but uh, you can connect with one another. You can ask questions. If you ask questions, we'll see it. We'll, we'll repeat the question. If you want to be up on stage, we'll bring you up on stage. You can ask your questions. So a lot of things, uh, a lot of things we can do. And without further ado, I'm going to, um, uh, Robbie, why don't you take it away? Tell us a little bit of who you are, what you're doing and why you're here. Hi, Michael. Uh, first of all, thank you very much for being with you at blockchainweekly.com, which I think is a great thing. It's a great platform and a fun way to talk about blockchain. And that brings me to blockchain, how, yeah, what do I do? I actually work since three years with blockchain, with the topic. We started some, yeah, in 2014, 15, we started with energy blockchain. Energy blockchain is not about mining and using energy, but using the blockchain for energy applications, the so-called smart grids. But we are also already deep into the topic. In the beginning, I was very skeptic. I thought, oh my God, what is this? Blockchain, something with chains of blocks. So more kind of something with buildings. No, actually finally it turned out it's a, it's a computer, it's a new system of distributed ledgers, distributed databases. And the more I learned about it, the more enthusiastic I became. And then I built up in last year, I started build up a community on LinkedIn. LinkedIn is, to my opinion, a platform for, um, for where you find the business people, where you find the serious guys, 
Uh, whereas Twitter is the is the Bitcoin and currency stuff. You find the fast news. So that's that's how I would see this. So I, I have have gathered a, quite a crowd, and my followers. You know, it's it's they increased with the Bitcoin. You know, it, it's the same curve. You know, going up like this. And what I see is many people are now interested in not only in currencies, Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies, but also in applications. And yeah, uh, the, bring, go ahead. And for applications, it's it's really now every day I get through LinkedIn, through emails, different channels, I get minimum five to seven white papers yeah white papers is in the in the old world yeah white papers have we used to call them business plans so they are not called anymore business plans but white papers nice it's a bit it's a lousy often lousy written business plans so most of white papers are like they are called white i don't see a single intelligent sentence there um, but some white papers have really interesting content of how to make use of the blockchain. So really, and we talk about health applications, um, internet of things. Um, we talk about energy applications, something for real estate. And, and it's hundreds, thousands of applications. And still, we just see the top of the iceberg. We don't, uh, we don't see everything. And we still are in the lab scale phase exploratory phase. We really don't know exactly how on a large scale um, blockchain would work. Internet we know. With internet we are all connected and we have, I saw that we have people from New Zealand here, greetings to the uh, Kiwi guys. We are from Australia, from Hong Kong probably, from Europe, around Europe and of course the US. We are linked, we are all linked with internet, uh, through the internet. And the internet is the um, made us connected with blockchain. And that's why I'm so enthusiastic about it. With blockchain, I see that we can have a different quality of connection. With the internet, we give large uh, providers of services like booking.com, like Facebook, like um, Uber, like other major platforms. We give them the, 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 the data. We present our data, they deal with it, and they make a lot of money out of it. With blockchain, we, <laughs> yeah, that's the case. And with blockchain, we have a chance that we can have our data back. You know, we can encrypt it and have it back that we still, if we want to give it away, maybe we get a little bit reward. And this reward could be a cryptocurrency. It could be something else. We don't know yet. but at least we get um, our data back. And that's kind of a nice story. I like it. Maybe, I mean, that's the, the nice part and I dream of it. Maybe this dream turns out to be a nightmare in five to 10 years. But for now, this dream is still alive. And that's why I'm so happy about it. Yeah. So, and, and you've been, Robbie, you've had a couple of events here that you've attended recently. What events have you been at? I have been uh, last week on FinTech Matters here in Vienna. It is a large FinTech con um, conference and their blockchain was a big topic because banks uh, see themselves now under pressure. They see that these peer-to-peer -peer applications could eradicate one day uh, the banks, which I'm not sure. I'm, I'm definitely not sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm not sure. Maybe we always need banks. Yeah, we need banks. But um, we can, uh, at least we will see a major, um, banks will be mostly affected. Yeah, they, because it's it's even my kids say, yeah, it would be really cool to just transfer a little, this little bit money I use for going shopping and, and my, buying my clothes or something for friends. And if you just could transfer it via the mobile phone and just easy going. And on blockchain, you could do that peer to peer, so device to, uh, to device, and the trust 
is in the technology itself. So that's what um, what blockchain is all about. If I would, I mean, maybe we have people here who are not so familiar with blockchain and we, are, we do big tech talk, which I, we could go deep into the Ethereum and smart contracts. But for the well, ones who are new... Let, let, let's yeah. cover blockchain just really quickly, right? I mean, um, uh, we have a we have a myriad of people that are here, and and there's probably a lot of people that'll be bored. But um, I, I know I spoke with uh, Brett Gould, uh, yeah. and he's been on a couple of blockchain lately. And Brett said, you know, uh, you explained it. I, I've been working with cryptocurrencies and and looking at uh, the securities and looking at, at at making trades and things of this nature. Um, and I really had become disinterested. I, I was on Blockchain Weekly. You de you described what was what could be possible with smart contracts and Ethereum and the ER uh, uh, ECR twenty tokenization and this kind of stuff. And and uh, you know, Brett and I all of a sudden are going back and forth almost on a daily basis. He's got a couple of projects. It looks like we might uh, uh, actually take a look at a blockchain consultant. So okay. uh, the, the the way we look at it, generally speaking, is the, uh, at the beginning there was the internet. The internet took you know 10 15 years for adoption right um right probably not a lot of you are here but i, I remember when i had uh uh you know a, a 300 baud uh, modem right um and uh I, I mean that was my first computer was a a commodore with a twin 1571 drive so i could run my bbs and play games simultaneously i mean uh, exactly. uh that was that was a while ago right and i was an early adopter right. and not a lot of, you know, some of my friends, you know, what are you doing? Well, I'm, I'm on the internet and, you know, there's data that we share and, and programs that we share. And they were like, yeah, 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 I don't understand it. And now it, the internet is really pervasive. That's kind of the first, the first, first, first thing that happens. Uh, the right. second thing that happens was the internet of things, right? Um, and now, I mean, you go shopping, you want a refrigerator, you're going to get the refrigerator that talks to the internet so that, you know, Amazon can send you milk when you're out. Um, you have Nest, you have all these types of, of products that um, uh, Nest will um, monitor different rooms in your house and keep the temperature right. Um, it, and you can do this from any place as long as you have interest uh, access to the Internet. Uh, you've got Echo, you've got uh, or, um, whatever the Amazon thing is and Siri and blah, 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 blah. You've got you've got all kinds of listening devices that are listening on the Internet of Things. Um, and, and we kind of heard about this at one point and said, yeah, what's the Internet of Things? Well, your, your, your computer will be connected to the Internet. We all laughed, right? We thought that was funny. Um, and as yeah. it turns out, yeah, maybe not so much, right? Maybe there is a reason for some of these things to be connected. And as it turns out, yeah, there are. So that we had the Internet, the Internet of Things. Then we had, and, and the Internet of, uh, of Things was compressed in the adoption period. The next internet was the internet of data, and it was compressed so far, so so closely, and happened so quickly that it's happened, and most people don't even know it happened. Um, and if you don't believe me that the internet of, of, of data has happened, uh, go search for, um, uh, you know, pugs, uh, pug dog puppies, or something, on right. uh, on Google, and then go to Facebook because you're going to start seeing the ads about Facebook. Right? We have these big long hashes of, of everyone. Um, and, and marketing is is all about remarketing and and and, re, and redirecting, uh, and we really know a lot. And that's the data that you were talking about, Robbie, uh, that everyone exactly. has and everyone shares. Um, and as opposed to um, uh, you know letting people sell that, the blockchain will have the capability of making it public so everyone has it. That's basically what's going to what's what's going to happen. Uh, the blockchain is a distributed ledger, but that anyway, that's a that's the the, the internet of data. That happened really, really, really quickly. Yeah. And then we had this thing called the Internet of Value. And everyone goes, yeah, what's the Internet of Value? Well, Bitcoin. I mean, Bitcoin is value and Bitcoin is on the Internet. Uh, Bitcoin started around 2008, 2009 with the CryptoPunks. Uh, had a couple of ups and downs, ups and downs, up and downs. But recently it's been spot on. Everyone knows uh, uh, Bitcoin. And when, yeah, oh, yeah, well, you know. What goes up must come. Yeah, eventually. <laughs> oh, no. I hope I can. You know, that you know, I can still keep it. Maybe you know. <laughs> yeah, you can keep it. I keep kept but, it there. Uh, yeah. You know, I, I. You know, like I say, the the bigger value will be in the value of smart contracts and and what we do with uh, with these smart contracts, how we change businesses. And I, uh, uh, as a uh, blockchain consultant, I'm the CEO for Blockchain Consultants. 
We're changing businesses every day. We're disrupting. We're disrupting. Uh, it, we're, we've got to come up with a better name than disrupting because it's it's more than disrupting. It's imploding. Uh, so anyway, so the Internet of, uh, of, of data was big. Yeah, internet of value was big, but it's it, it's even more compressed. The next one is the Internet of Trust. Um, and Internet of Trust is uh, what you've referred to as the smart contracts. Right. That's what smart contracts do. They convey trust. They convey trust very, very, very well. Uh, it's immutable. Uh, it's an unhackable blockchain. And we have blockchains that do things, and they do things autonomously. If you want to want to know mean, what, I like, uh, I like you know, go ahead. Michael, I like the explanation of Don Tapscott on on how um, how blockchain works, and and um, he once said, you know, it's uh, it's like um, compressing. Uh, or just making out of chicken McNuggets a uh, chicken again. So making well, the chicken McNuggets into chicken again. That's maybe one day uh, we can do that. Yeah, maybe we can manage chicken McNuggets into chicken. But for now, it's tough. And that's about blockchain too. Maybe one day somebody can hack it. But for now, and that's with all about the trust, which I see, there is um, a really, what I can say is, at the moment, I trust that the the system itself, the idea of making a very tough to hack system like blockchain um, and their different platforms, but the idea could work. That it's really tough to um, with this distributed approach, with this shrinking of data into hashes. Yeah, that makes all sense, and we can bring this this uh, this data to our mobile phones and be part of a very large system and uh, of a database, a distributed database. And that's that's all about trust. And I trust, that's why I'm so enthusiastic about it. And very that makes me also very happy about that. There is something new, but you call it, yeah, disrupt. Actually, we will see many businesses disrupting for sure. That's, I'm oh. very sure. Um, it's, the speed no doubt about and that. when this happens, we will see how long it will take. I remember, you right. know, when I, when I was, I was on the internet and was so with Google being so slow those days. Now it's quite fast and efficient. Still, when I look at some other technologies like virtual reality, it's still very slow. I thought it will come much faster. Maybe with blockchain, we must be patient too. For now, this, the, the, the people in the bubble, and that's maybe part of our crowd here on um, Locked Info today, they are many, many people are very enthusiastic about it and, and have lots of hopes. This technology brings also hope that maybe we can have new applications, new uh, new ways of doing things. And then that's, that's, we had this economic crisis 2008 and many people lost hope in, in the internet bubble, I, I see, or, or in the or loss of money, um, lost, lost. And this blockchain brings hope to the people and especially in Transition countries in develop, de developing countries. I mean, we have a large crowd in India, and they they follow me, and and, and we have lots of big businesses going there, because it gives hope. And also in in Russia, there's excellent experts there. They have a cryptographic, um, a good cryptographic um, education there since since a very very long time. So you find good programmers there. And Vitalik Buterin, I mean, his, 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 his ancestors, they, his father, they is Russian. I mean, that's, that's where the people come from. It's not only US and maybe Europe, good old lady Europe, yeah, conservative lady Europe. No, it's also these countries. And China is building up. And, and also we can talk about China too, because I, I worked in China for quite a while and have a good overview of what's going on there now. Well, I, I, and I think what's exciting and yeah there's a lot of hope there's a lot of a lot of things we can do and, and we can look forward to a future but i think it's interesting to actually realize that there's things that are going on right now i mean there's coins that have been minted that are utility coins that do specific things and do them very well do them better than other things and uh you know the the story i i, I give is i live in phoenix arizona i want to buy a uh, a 65 ford pickup right and I have uh, yeah. $10,000 to buy it. I'm in Phoenix, Arizona, a lot of cowboys here. I can't find one for 10,000, they're all 15,000. But I find one in Detroit, Michigan for 8,500, right? So right now I have the opportunity, I, I, I can go, okay, I want that truck in Detroit, here's my choices. I can take $8,500 and send it to them and uh, never mm -hmm. see it again and never see the truck, right? <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's happy in Detroit then, huh? 
<laughs> yeah, well, I, I'm just saying, you know, if you send the money and, you know, or you can go through, there's this thing called escrow.com. I can send, uh, I can I can put up an escrow, right? And escrow.com is qualitative, uh, quantitative, not qualitative, right? So it's just quantitative. Right. What will happen is I'll put 8,500 uh, 8, uh, and I'll pay 150 bucks to have it shipped from Troy to Phoenix. Um, and uh, the day before the guy's going to come pick it up, the guy's brother comes over and says, look, my truck has the same tires. Uh, mine are kind of bald. Can we switch them out before they go? And he goes, yeah, no, no problem. And uh, they don't bother rolling up the window because, uh, you know, there's no quality assurance here. There's just quantitative analysis with escrow.com. So, yeah, uh, it, it goes, it gets here. Escrow.com says, Mike, did you get it? And I go, yeah, I got it. It's bald tires and the, there's mildew in the cabin. But, yeah, I got it. Okay, well, we'll transfer the money over. Uh, with uh, smart contracts, we can do qualitative kind of analysis, right? So we can, uh, we can, I, I can go to him and I can go, look, um, I am going to um, uh, open up a smart contract. You're going to put 150 bucks in. I'm going to put 8,500 plus 150, um, and we're going to get a transportation company that's going to come out and grab that 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 truck, and and bring it to me. That's the first 150 bucks on the smart contract. When I get it. I have the I have the choice of accepting it if the quality is good, or sending it back and using your 150 bucks to send it back, right? And the smart contract will do this automatically, right? Um, if there's a period, of, we can set up the smart contract to go. If there's a period of time that's gone by uh, and the contract is null and void, then just you know send it back the money and blah blah blah. We can do all kinds of things with a smart contract. These are the types of things where we now have qualitative and quantitative analysis, and there's a transfer of trust. We can't do that with with just money, right? It, it basically right. the way it looks. The way it looks is um, any time since the dawn of mankind up until about twenty fourteen, right? Mm -hmm. uh, if we had money, we could do things, and we and to do things, we needed money, right? After twenty fourteen, we have that, but we have money that can do things, money that can yes. actually execute a smart contract, money that can pay multiple people on a contract with coins. These coins are transmutable into dollars and this is a, a new economy that's coming on and uh you know we are working with with companies right now this very moment that are doing interesting things with these smart contracts we're building smart contracts there's a couple of guys on the uh on the pan on the audience today that are actually solidity programmers that i spoke with and they're actually doing some really interesting things um you're uh, the you uh, had mentioned uh fintech uh, and the banking industry, the banking industry has been using blockchain distributed ledger for, I mean, three or four years now. Yeah. Um, it's right. a private, it's not public, it's private. It's yeah, a different kind of. That's the problem also. Yeah. Yeah. That's the problem I see. That's also a danger. There's, there's public um, blockchain and uh, private blockchain. The problem could be that the, if banks um, really built up strong private blockchain systems, blockchains, um, we could have kind of still have not the full potential of use which which makes a public blockchain where you can do everything yeah um, private it's like the intranet yeah of a company it's like the internet the internal it's kind of internal and then they let people participate that is the internet uh, 5.0 i would say yeah so it's uh, it's it, i mean that's that's already here that's, i mean it really is already here I I, yeah, I see I see this this private private I have a problem with these private blockchains because I think that's not the idea what it was originally was the open blockchains and we will see a lot of private blockchains of course this will come but I hope that the open blockchains um, are used you mentioned money that's a very good example but uh, what I what what we smart contracts sometimes people think it's they are smart and they're contracts. Uh, neither they are really smart in the sense of that they have uh, intelligence in them, but we have to give them intelligence. That's why, why they are smart. So our smartness is transferred to the smart contracts. And they are actually not contracts like you have to sign in. and all. Actually, they are like execution files. They are execution files, kind of like exe files from, from computer. If, if this, then that, uh, you know, if this, then that, if, if this, then that for money. Basically. Exactly. It's actually, and what we do in Austria, and I saw application and, and I saw in the conferences um, recently, 
um, oh, recently, actually, it's quite a while, but there's often a misunderstanding with these smart contracts that maybe somebody thinks we have, one has to uh, sign something. And uh, actually, we, we tell the system, like Ethereum, uh, other platforms, uh, there's Hyperledger, there's Chain, there's the Chinese NEO building coming up. Um, we, we program execution files and I mean, you don't have to be a programmer at the, at the very end, but you will be a, f a, a user which just doesn't bother, but we just want to buy a truck. What we do is we, for energy blockchain, if you have, we, here in Austria, we have a lot of people who have private houses with photovoltaic panels on their roofs, and you could also exchange energy, which means the utility usually, they don't pay, I mean, they pay really low for the Putting putting the energy back, yeah. They pay you. They they pay you a lot. Uh, they 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 uh, bill you a lot. The high high price for when you buy it, but low price when you send it back. The and the electricity, and there is a system now where where you can still use the grid, but just transfer from one household to another. And we have use cases now with a built up in January February uh, this year, with um, several hundreds up to one thousand users, and on the blockchain, it's not money which is written there, but it's kilowatt. It's the watt. It's the energy is written there. So the currency is not money. The currency is energy, and that's smart. That's really why it makes smart contracts so smart. You can exchange. You can build up. Another example, we have. Um, I have. I uh, saw yesterday in Slovenia, um, in, at the Slovenia blockchain Bitcoin conference. It was a large one, hundreds of people there. Slovenia has traditionally has a strong, um, strong um, community. And they have also the politicians uh, supporting the blockchain um, um, community there. They have, for, for instance, InsurePal is it called. InsurePal is a new way of insurance. They, um, they put um, not only you and me, if, if for instance, I, I have a car, yeah. I pay insurance, uh, 800 euro, 1,000 euro, yeah, 1,000 uh, US dollar a day, uh, a year. And then um, it's still of this price, there's a lot goes into marketing and uh, there's fraud and so on. You have to deduct. And then um, of this sum, still a lot could be saved when using blockchain because a, a safe system, safe technology, and they add some trustees. They You have... A, a person who says, "Yeah, uh, Robbie is a good driver, and I trust him, and and um, and I will also, in case something happens, um, I will also um, be part of it." And I, he, Robbie, will also trust, give me some to trust. Yeah, as a, a, a friend, we know each other, we trust each other, which both reduces our cost of the insurance. And if this model for maybe for someone I don't know, I wouldn't do, of course, but for my kids. It's very likely I uh, I will be a trustee because my daughter then when she has a crash with the car and she does something uh, she will think oh my god puppy is even a kind of he I I mean puppy has also uh, he's involved in this system yeah so, so it's what we're it's working also on, on it, yeah yeah what we're working on right now is a thing called smart contract leasing where we're actually leasing cars right yeah. so and and insurance is a part of that so. The the uh, the insurance portion is is a smart contract. In other words, if you're a member of the if you have coins in yeah. this ICO, uh, you can uh, lease the cars that they own uh, in the ICO. Um, yeah. And there's insurance companies that we're at this point uh, negotiating with so that they'll take coin um, mm. for payment. Um, oh, yeah. And the one thing that we really wanted to understand is can we shut um, uh, can we shut the car off with a smart contract? As it turns yeah. out, we can. Uh, <laughs> in the Internet, of things, we can actually shut the car off or control the car. So uh, we have, uh, uh, in smart contract leasing, we have an automobile. Um, uh, you have an application on your phone. Uh, you, you walk up to the phone, the phone uh, near field communication. Um, uh, the phone uh, senses that you're there. The car senses you're there. Uh, there's something that comes up on your phone. You press it in, unlocks the door. You sit in the car, boom. The screen pops up and you go, hi, would you like to lease this car? Yes. How many days do you want it? Thus. Where, are you going out of state? No. Uh, do you have insurance? No. Would you like to get us to get you insurance? Yes. In, okay. Hang on just a second. Okay. We have an insurance 
he's going to charge you this many coin. Uh, is that okay with you? Yes. Can we take this coin out of your wallet? Yes. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Would you like to start the car? Yes, 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 yes. Okay, start the car. <laughs> then you're off. And 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 so now we have uh, a smart contract that's actually executed a, um, a, a car lease. And in the United States, we've got all kinds of things happening in transportation where uh, people um, are, are going, I'm going to go. Okay. All right. So I, I got you, Mike. We have a question here, Robbie, just a moment, but okay. so, yeah. um, and I want to get to that right away. But the thing of it is, yes. is the smart contract is actually taking care of the insurance. The smart contract will, will watch the mileage. The smart contract will, um, uh, we can actually build in uh, gasoline and oil and things of this nature into the smart contract with different types of vendors. And we can keep track of everything. And we lens the data. We understand where the car is at at any one given time. Um, and if, uh, the guys, uh, you know, uh, if the wallet runs out of coin, we can shut the car down. Um, yeah, that's, if that's another smart know, thing. If, yeah. Yeah. It's and another smart thing. Smart contract maybe you can do. Because I could talk about um, for gas, for instance, we have in Vienna, the Vienna utility just recently started a gas network trade on blockchain. So they do it now, of course. A certain it's still confined to a certain area you know they don't do the full business there but they are careful and that's right yeah my house is heat, heated with gas so if it doesn't work maybe it's cold here um but yeah, there's it, a lot of things happening a lot of early adapters exactly yeah, i want to get want to get the, the the question so yes. um yep. mike go ahead is there a question oh we have actually someone that's coming on good Yeah, hey everyone, I'm, I'm going to actually ask the question for one of our uh, attendees in the audience here. Um, this is from Chris yeah. Jones. Chris asks, yeah. uh, he said for Robbie, he goes, how do you see the scalability challenges for public blockchains being sorted out? Hmm. Hmm. That's a hard one. Good yeah, it's, it's a good, good one. <laughs> yes, um, the scalability. I mean, with blockchain, we have the problem. We see a lot of ICOs now, yeah. ICOs, initial coin offering means everybody, every startup doesn't go for crowdfunding anymore, but goes for ICOs. The good thing is they can very fast get a lot of money for a business which is really questionable, um, and it's so-called public, also public blo uh, blockchains. And the, uh, the scaling up is I see the only chances if there is a business behind which already exists. So it is like the energy trade, you have customers, there is real energy transfer, there is um, consumers, uh, producers, there is an exchange and people are involved in a real business. And this to transfer onto a uh, blockchain, that makes sense. It, so I see the upscaling when you use uh, for insurance, let me take insure. Everybody has an insurance in, in the Western world. Everybody has maybe several. So this is ongoing business to replace this, um, to replace this uh, business with on blockchain. Here we can scale up. Of course, what we may not forget, blockchain is still on lab scale, laboratory scale. We have several, uh, several technical problems to solve. The Ethereum is very slow. We have even this 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 uh, game. How was it called? You remember this kitty um, uh, blockchain kitty. kitties? Yeah, crypto crypto kitties. Crypto kitties. They always um, they started with a game on Ethereum, and Ethereum almost went down because it was overloaded. Yeah, by a computer game. Miners, and if we, the miners are still complaining a little bit, crypto kitties has still got a good volume. And I think that uh, more to the question is. How do how do we handle the scalability? And there are uh, you're you're absolutely right. There's going to be some changes. There's going to be some things that happen. Yeah. One of those is in consensus, right? Um, yeah. um, how many people need to be in a consensus? Uh, does a uh, hundred thousand, ten thousand? You know, is is ten thousand just as good as a hundred thousand? Uh, can we scale the consensus portion of the uh, of the transaction and in the mining? And can we can we? Yeah. Is there stuff? The 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 um, uh, the blockchain is immutable, right? And it's all there. In other words, we can we can look at the uh, Bitcoin blockchain and look at the Genesis block. We see everything. 
do we really need to see everything? Is there uh, is there yeah. a period of time, or is there can we uh, build something into the blockchain so that um, this uh, this transaction will appear and disappear after a certain things? There's uh, there's a company and they're they're coming on in January. It's uh, uh, Flurry uh, and it's F L U R dot E E. Yeah, and uh, yes. doing some very interesting things with blockchain. Lots of things are happening, and the scalability is coming. It's down the pike. Um, there are some new uh, uh, new distributed ledgers that are uh, very, very scalable. Um, yeah. And there's a new kind of a blockchain called a community blockchain. We have private blockchains, we have community blockchains, and we have public blockchains. Public blockchains are, 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 are data that's shared uh, if someone has, uh, uh, you know, it's encrypted, uh, so I can the the data is out there. Everyone can see it. Only the people that have the lens and the encryption can see that data. So I so I can share data between databases. I, I don't need to set up a server and then share that 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 data with uh, with uh, uh, the people. Right. It's 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 available to everyone. Right. That's the kind of the public, and that's what you're talking about. The a lot of value in the public blockchains. Community blockchains are different different story altogether. Um, uh, you know, consensus is a smaller portion. Um, yeah. It's built for people that are in a community or or have uh, access to a, a certain uh, thing. If you're if it's a product and a subscription, then it's a community uh, blockchain. Uh, it doesn't have the uh, the the overhead that a lot of the other ones have. Public uh, private blockchains are different different story altogether. And we'll get this sorted out as things go on. Um, there are a lot of applications on Ethereum right now that should be on a public chain, quite uh, uh, on a yeah. private chain, quite frankly. And there and there's other ones that should be on a community chain. So the, the this will sort out over time. What we see is that um, there are several uh, different approaches on uh, scaling up. Um, let, when we take uh, talk about Ethereum, for instance, we have we could use the forking, which is everybody's nightmare. But forking could also be a chance to make you know one chain into more chains so it's it's not finally thought through there there is research going on and by the way you know vienna recently the institute of um, how is it called institute of crypto economics opened last week so there is a lot of research going on on how to deal with the 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 forking whether to just let it die one one for part of the fork and then let the chain continue to grow this could be an option to deal with forking. There's also um, um, the uh, kind of, um, it, it's kind of, you know, the, even the vocabulary is not there because I cannot express it so clearly because there is no standard for this, for these very crazy new ideas. But there is still some, um, some uh, to speed up the process of uh, mining and also to, um, there, there's a solution like, putting blockchain into packages yes and have distributed uh, mining you know parallel mining so that would be more economic that not everybody has to test all but it's it's split into little little uh, pieces yeah. which we can swallow more easily it's just, what, but what every is yeah, yeah what is consensus it's, 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 and, and but, but this, consensus it's it, it brings a, a lot less overhead to the to the chain exactly but all these measures go there's always a security problem linked to it yeah so every measure we, we the pure blockchain is still the safest every measure uh, we introduce could be um, could be um they had like, finally a safety issue and safety first we must think of safety first and that i, I prefer a slower blockchain for the moment but with a really where we can still trust that it cannot be hacked uh, instead of a blockchain, which can maybe sooner than this chicken be done, but uh, can sooner be be hacked. That's that's where we it's, actually I, I, have, oh. we actually have a, a guy that's asking some questions. And Danny, um, uh, yeah. Danny, uh, would you like to come on board um, and talk a little bit um, about what you're talking about in the chat? Danny, say yes. Danny Holland, yes, no, okay. Yes, Danny, um, Danny, it's not a big yeah, deal. Uh, Wait. Mike, can we bring Danny up on uh, on the stage? Is there a possibility of doing that? Ah, yeah, looks good. Hi, Danny. 
Good. So, Danny, how, how are you? Hi, Why don't you tell us a little bit about you yeah, know who good. you are, why you're here, and you know that kind of stuff. By the way, I like so, the uh, earbuds. I like the earbuds better than the than the headphones. Oh man, those things are so good though. They have a built-in amplifier, so they like go. Ah, it's awesome. It's great. Anyway, <laughs> um, so uh, I'm a smart contract developer uh, with Solidity for the most part. Um, do a lot of Node.js, uh, uh, smart contract interaction automation, and uh, whatnot. And uh, something um, I was chatting with uh, Chris Jones here about um, is that for the scalability problem, um, there's two major technologies that are coming quickly. Um, we yeah. have a minor difference of opinions on how effective they will be, uh, but I think they'll be good in the, long, in the short term. And uh, the first one is the Raiden network, which yeah. is, is kind of an off-chain network that will exactly. combine and uh, watch a bunch of uh, internal transactions and then only put the pertinent information on the Ethereum blockchain. And um, exactly. that sounds like a good uh, stopgap for now. Um, and then uh, something Vitalik has been talking about is the uh, is sharding, where yeah. where the network right. itself can break into smaller networks that can do all the the trust verification and whatnot. My only concern about the sharding is um, the fifty one percent rule or the fifty one percent attack um, is if the shard is too small, it could potentially be hijacked by enough hash power. Now, um, I'm sure uh, I have a lot of faith in Vitalik specifically. He's uh, an alien from another planet. So, you know, uh, I think, but um, yeah, I, I think he, oh, he totally is. He totally is. Yeah. He knows that we'll be, we'll be communicating with aliens 50,000 years from now. And he set that up. But that being said, um, uh, I'm fairly certain that they'll find a solution to this problem. Um, e and uh, if not, there's always EOS. EOS is coming up soon, which is another VM, but it's um, supposed to hit the uh, potentially infinite numbers of transactions per second that can, it can scale to meet the demands. Um, I have a friend of mine who's been working on the test net for a little bit. Uh, he oh, yeah. says it's awesome and it works really, really okay. well. Um, but I, I'm waiting for it to be public. Yeah, EOS is Vitalik's uh, uh, um, uh, Ethereum two. Well, yeah, new baby. wait, whoa, yeah, yeah wait, you really? it out. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. See, that's awesome. Yeah. Well, uh, <laughs> that is, uh, from what I understand. I mean, it, it's interesting when you when you uh, watch Vitalik, and there's a lot of videos out there. Uh, uh, you know. Yeah. Um, someone will ask him a question and he'll think and then he'll come back and he'll go, well, that one is about, you know, seven, seven, seven transactions a second. He always he always prefaces what his comments are, what his answers are with with the velocity of the transaction. So um, uh, he's very aware of the issue and what's going on. Um, there are uh, right now there's four or five different forks that we have out there that are going on simultaneously. Um, exactly. Who's going to win? Who knows, right? It's is it going to be beta? Yeah. It's going to be the VHS? Uh, who cares? We all use um, cable, right? Uh, yeah. Uh, that's, right. That's kind of, yeah. <laughs> you know the the thing about it is everyone is really complaining about uh, a lot of different things and a lot of different problems. And my comment to them is always, you know, the Model T had very little, very little in similarity to a. Uh, to, to, to my uh, Toyota Camry. I mean, uh, it, yeah. there's a steering wheel, there's four tires. That's about the end of the similarities. Um, and yeah. over time, we'll begin to get some of this stuff done. Really, what's the important thing is what can you do with it now and how can you do interesting things? Uh, and if you can't think and of- And there's a uh, lot what, of room. There, oh, at the moment, a there's a huge amount of room in the smart contract space, so long as the, the gas limit um, stays uh, flexible. See, that was the right. whole thing that CryptoKitties destroyed the network. Uh, yeah. So, so as long as all of the miners increase the gas, uh, the gas limit, and keep it that yeah. way, we can at least hobble forward with the slightly higher transaction fees until some of these other technologies come online. At the very least, for the ERC twenty tokens. That's at the very least for Raiden. Um, it is right. a, it, it very well might be a stopgap, but it's a great stopgap for all of the ICOs that are out there. And there's a huge number and there's even oh, more yeah. coming. I've launched like five ERC tokens in the last week. Um, most of them as jokes like potato token. Yeah. Um, exactly. but, uh, but there's, there's, um, 
There is a path potato forward in the short term. Potato token IO. Uh, uh, yeah, say, shameless plug there for for uh, uh, for a uh, for a charity. It is a charity. We're not actually here to make any money. It is a real ERC twenty token. It, there is a real website. It's a, totally a joke though. It started from some trolling comment on LinkedIn. Mm, yeah. What was, it? what was it? Dogecoin? Did you? You know about Doge? Doge. Yeah, Doge. Yeah, oh, Doge. man. Doge started as a joke, too. And it's still worth yeah. nothing, which is awesome. But it's Doge, and it's awesome. Yeah. No, I mean, it's got there's a market cap. Of, uh, the market cap on that is huge. Yeah, but there's like I, 10 bajillion coins. So each one is worth a point zero 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 zero. I mean, I actually yeah, got I, into it, cryptocurrency because of Doge. <laughs> it pulled you in with the crypto kitties we need applications which touch the people and that's crypto kitties you know good touch one yep. because the one i mean the, the highest value i read is one hundred twenty thousand uh, us dollar for one crypto kitty that's crazy I, i've that's made a couple hundred bucks off of it yep good <laughs> good but it's still we need what we talk now is super tech talk but I just came from a, from the city of Vienna. Launches tomorrow a platform um, on they they open up their database on blockchain. So data will be available for startups on in, in on blockchain. That's quite cool. Yeah. That's really good system. And the city of Vienna takes some risk. It's really I see that they will develop like Zug, you know, the crypto valley in Switzerland and other hubs. But Vienna is doing well. And the mayor and the party, the partition, even they, they supported it. We need the support. But when we talk That's to the good. people, we, when we talk to the people and then they listen to smart, we have to talk to, you know, um, we have to touch people. And this we need, we need yeah. simple applications. The Vienna, with, uh, Vienna city government, they, they have 30,000 employees because all the, all the teachers and also health staff is there, 30,000. They get kind of vouchers for food for lunch. City government so, now wants to put that on blockchain because that the people they have an idea how it works. If we talk about forking and so on, it, it's not about food, fork and knife because usually we use that for, for food. We never forget. We blockchain sometimes forget, but uh, fork is fork is a, a tool to eat, and I think we need also to explain to the people, and that's why I also want. Um, I, mean, I tried to hard. I want to explain to broad auditorium. Um, auditorium. I want uh, my. That's why I built up this uh, blockchain Robbie hashtag and then the LinkedIn platform, so, and I'm building up on Twitter. Just, uh, 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 to, to cut you off here for a second, um, that is the biggest thing that all of us are dealing with at the moment yeah. is the, um, the the getting the layman in to this field, um, getting yeah. getting my grandma to know what an Ethereum address is and to know how to handle her keys and to know all of this stuff is the hardest thing. Um, trying to convey to non-technical people um, what it is we're doing and why it's so secure and why you can trust it is the number one challenge we have right now. We would be at 50 or 100 or you know $500,000 in Bitcoin right now per Bitcoin if the average average Joe could get into it. But right now, the, the learning curve is like a brick wall. And so something I've been spending a lot of time recently um, is trying to figure out a way to explain to everybody how, how to get in, how to um, understand what's going on, and just education. Education is the number one priority right now. Yes, I write awesome smart contracts. I write yeah. really cool projects. There's amazing projects. The insurance, the cars, the um, crypto yeah. kitties, everything else. It's amazing. Yeah. But the thing is, <laughs> yeah, right. Um, yeah, porn's coming soon. Don't worry about it. But uh, but the thing is, um, getting your normal people into it is the hard part. And um, if we can all, all of us, everybody on this call, everybody uh, who can, who can do it, if we can make a concerted effort to educate the masses, we will all benefit from it. You know what was yeah, uh, on the conference? I just I came, came. Your time came. To, go ahead. Uh, I, I yeah. just want to thank you for his time. And he's absolutely yeah. right. That's what we're going to do. Blockchain Weekly uh, education uh, will uh, help uh, uh, speed adoption. And go ahead, Robert. And we do have a Chris, couple of raised hands and some questions. Okay. So go ahead. Chris, first of all, thank you very much for your comment. And of course, you have a deep understanding of, of um, smart contracts. I have. 
I do also some coding. I also did some smart, tried my smart contracts and the, you know, the, uh, but I'm not so deep to it, into it. But for instance, on this, on this workshop, I just came up from this meetup, Vienna city meetup for, for blockchainers. The number one, um, request of people who are not so familiar with blockchain was, yeah, we want, I, we bought some coins, we bought some bitcoins and others, but now we want to pay with it. Maybe the city government shall at least allow us to pay somewhere of their services, like like this usual service you have that like even this city tax, tourist tax, or whatever. But at least start with it, and that that needs some also some how to say courage for also for a government to say, okay, we go to that business. Maybe it crashes one day. We never know. Yeah, we shall never forget. Currency well, trading is, you know, right? Just I, ask for forgiveness I friend, later. He does currency trading. He, he, I have a friend, one of my best friends, he does currency trading. You know what he always says? He says, Robbie, currency trading is a very risky business. And then now I can add cryptocurrency trading is even riskier. So we shall mm -hmm. never forget. Okay, so we have yeah. a video question. And yes. I am sorry, I am not going to even attempt that name. I apologize. Can you, uh, what, what, can you, how do you pronounce your name, sir? Venkata Sridhar Murthy. Okay. Good. Hi. 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 How are you? Hello. Uh, Where are I you from? I am from India, but right now I am in Wilmington, Delaware. Uh, okay, I recently learned about uh, Bitcoin and this blockchain technologies. I'm not an expert in that. I'm totally a new yeah. guy. But somewhere I, I I also see everyday advertisements about the ICOs on the Facebook, uh, like Harvard University they introduced one ICO and uh, Bloom I think Stanford University people introduced an ICO a lot of uh, coin offering and everything is going on, and another thing I read on internet is quantum computing has either some solutions or uh, some kind of. Uh, break up to the algorithm which will end the bitcoin era totally i am i'm totally confused i don't know anything about it okay i would yes. like uh, right. you know your um, experience in that area okay uh, first of all what is, what is your name because the uh, are the my links name, I, that's that's, the, yeah, that's very long name, name. You have a short yeah, name like Venkat. this Venkat. 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 yes Venkat. Yes. Venkat. um that's a very good question, and you are not alone with your question. Um, and I must admit, when I started with blockchain, I thought it's chains of blocks from the real estate industry, you know, blocks of buildings, like chain of blocks. I thought, okay, they, they kind of build that together, and it's houses, big houses, and kind of chain together. So, and ICO, it's, it's not an international organization of something, yeah, currency organization, but it's an initial coin offering. In, in okay. principle, it's like, it works like this, that um, you say, yeah, um, you say that you, for a certain, um, like an email, uh, you send somebody an email and this email gets a value, yeah? This has immediately a value. For now, email you can send to a friend, no value. But you give this email a value and you encrypt this email and that means um, that also there has, it, it has a high security involved. And with the link of an electronic submission from A to B, uh, plus this encryption could be called a kind of ICO. You, you call this a currency. Actually, it's not a currency what we think. We think currency is US dollar and there is gold behind and so on. But we call this special email, or you can use it WhatsApp message. We call this a kind of surrogate currency. And that's what we're talking about. We are not talking about real currencies of Indian rupees or, or um, US dollars or Austrian European Euro, but they, every startup now, um, makes their own currency. And that's why we have a list of many, many currencies now, cryptocurrency called, and they are crypt because they are encrypted. And these currencies, uh, we will maybe live in future, maybe not like the money from the states, but money from organizations, from startups, from companies, 
from uh, international organizations, we don't even from private persons, maybe a so called crypto um, currency based economy, maybe the, the, the this governmental money will shift to kind of this crypto money. And we don't know yet, I cannot tell you. But uh, we see that there is science, there is an idea that these cryptocurrencies will play a major role. And we see this when you look at the Bitcoin, um, when at the Bitcoin rate, uh, how it increased the value over the time, it looks like this, you know, I do like this, it looks like it goes up like hell. Yeah, that's where where crypto cryptocurrencies go up like this. Yeah, like they, they go up like here. We, we have this Bitcoin here. But when we look at the economy and the amount of money traded compared to Internet, we are still here in the total amount of what is, you know, what is traded. We, we have a, not a, we have not the volume reached, uh, which, uh, in, uh, for instance, other currencies would reach and internet bubble reached. So we are at the very beginning. We watch now a volcano erupting, but we are just the first smoke we see. We don't know how this volcano will change the world. So we, we don't, yeah. we, and we thanks don't, for answering that question. And uh, I got Gregory Millen coming on with a question and I, I, hope, I hope that answered your question. I mean, lots of things about what uh, cryptocurrencies are, how we can do them, what, what can happen with them and uh, I don't think I would worry about quantum uh, computing uh, damaging the Bitcoin too much. I mean, we've really come a long way with that. Uh, but uh, we're, we've got a question from Greg. So, Greg, go ahead. Yes. Okay. Um, thank you, Michael. Um, I just want to come right actually back to the beginning of this session. Uh, Michael, you mentioned the the Internet of Data Um mm. So it's I just just before I launch into my question, can I just clarify one thing? Uh, my understanding is there is a maximum of twenty one million bitcoins. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah, twenty one. Yes. So, so going back to to Danny's remark about uh, I can't remember which coin he was talking about or token. You know, it's not worth anything because there's gazillions of them. So. Gotcha. Um, if any of you have read uh, Chris Anderson's book, Free, or followed his um, long tail uh, economic methodology, um, you know, we lived in an age of uh, scarcity um, mm -hmm. in, the, in the atoms world, you know, hence why antiques are so valuable. Yeah. Um, with, in the digital age, you know, we, we live in a world of abundance. So, right. Um, so is Bitcoin bake, breaking and ultimately its value is driven by its scarcity, being that there's only 21 million uh, tokens or coins that yeah. can be mined. And therefore, they're actually breaking the, the model of digitization um, of, of mm. information wanting to be free. Um, okay. And... Um, uh, and and this is this is this is sort of driving that that kind of rush on the bubble. Um, I'm not sure, Greg. And, I'm and then sure, I, Greg. you know, to to add on to that, um, you know, is, is 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 the is the blockchain therefore bringing order to to disorder? Um, you know, in its complexities, mm. you know, uh, which is why you know information actually wants to grow in economics. Yeah. You know, by creating, creating uh, that that the, you 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 mentioned something earlier, Michael, around um, uh, you know the the quantitative and qualitative products that that money can actually do things now. Right. You know, it, so money money itself in in that uh, in in the in the smart contract it actually has know how and knowledge built in that is executable. Um, right. And there, therefore, there's this. Therefore, I, I'm just posing this question: Is there this like dichotomy going yeah. on around yeah. abundance and scarcity? Yeah. I, yeah. I, I, okay. I, so I that's my I kind think, of big, big. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, uh, yeah. The the philosopher in the room has has been has been heard. Uh, and his name is Gregory Millen. Now, um, uh, Greg, I, I really want to kind of back up a second here, and you're looking at a couple of metrics that 
uh, you're not you're not looking at them quite right. The reason that there is um, a, a set number of, of Bitcoin that will ever be minted uh, has nothing to do with the with the amount of coins that are being minted today. Really, the the algorithm that is set up within Bitcoin and any coin has a different algorithm. So anytime that you're looking at an ICO or looking at getting involved in an investment, look at the algorithm, look at the white paper, and look at the code that uh, uh, that is the uh, the uh, the coin, and make sure that yeah you know you're you agree with what's happening here uh bitcoin grows at about 10 percent per annum and at, 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 at what happens is the uh the amount of gold uh grows at about 10 percent per annum and uh the as it turns out the population of the globe grows at about 10 percent per annum so so basically the 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 uh the scarcity thing the component that, that was built into bitcoin has more to do with um, trying to keep it stable as bitcoins per yeah. individual and keep some sort of stability I can, there. I can add as, something. Yeah, I, I would add that even money is also limited. If you if you press if if you turn on the printing machine for money, the value goes down. So it's also very it's limited. Money is limited. Gold is limited. That's why it has a value. If it's like available like sand on this the, on the that, that's why. That's why you can create value. And it also brings some order because we, we, we see when you don't turn on the printing machine of money, yeah, if you don't print, then you have stable economies. We have economies like the US, like in Western countries, where they we don't print money like hell, but we're very careful. The central banks are very careful printing money. And that's the same with Bitcoin. I think the logic is similar. You have to have a certain amount. It may not be endlessly yeah and no no not not because then the value it would be never of value probably maybe we end up one day in a system where there's endless money for everyone and we can still go and buy from buy that i i know philosophers you know even there is an austrian group of crypto philosophers i invented a a, a, a name now okay for it uh, it's um, copyright robbie blockchain robbie crypto philosophers and the crypto and this group they think that maybe one can give um um give coins for free kind of yeah or or yeah. And, and let, let robots work, do the work, let, let the machines work and we get some earnings and that we have our living. It's, it's a, yeah, you be we deep into socialist theory, yeah, but why not? Yes, this can be, but, but for the real world now, we have a limited um, number. This number is chosen. So the Bitcoin, they have chosen this 20 million. It's, it's a decision. They took it, yeah. It's, 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 it can be questions, but it, they said we do that. It was decision. So we're going to bring Danny up again. Danny's raising yeah. his hand again. Yeah. Um, and we wanted to get, uh, you know, by the way, we're kind of limited on space. I've got two questions um, and we're limited on time. So Danny, go, go, go. Yeah. I'll make this super yeah. quick. Sorry. Um, I disagree with you. There is not a limited supply um, as, as much as you'd think there is. 21 million sounds like there's a limited supply. Well, with the mm -hmm. U.S. dollar, you can only break it into pennies. Right. Uh, Bitcoin, you can break into what eight decimal places with Ethereum. It's like 18. So there mm. isn't technically a limited supply. I mean, yeah, yes, sure. Mm. There's a certain number that are set out right now. But the thing yeah. is, it has to fluctuate to match the market. Otherwise, yeah. it wouldn't work at all. There is no such thing right. as stable currency. It, it just right doesn't exist. You, you would yeah. have to be able to have it fluctuate hence the the number of yeah. decimal places hence the reason it's up at seventeen thousand, and that's a justified price is that's a yeah. valid uh value that's a valid price because yeah. um it's adjusted to meet the market right sorry that was i just had to make yeah, that comment right. I'll, I'll go. i mean Maybe there is no right and wrong, but different views uh, of, of, of different angles of the same the same structure we see. Yeah. Uh, real quick, we have a, uh, a question. How can we configure the network with a consensus algorithm? Um, okay. And this is coming from a very smart person who is really thinking about this. Um, and the consensus algorithm now resides um, in the smart chain and in the blockchain. And there's a consensus algorithm that, that says which block is correct. If there's a change in the block, we have consensus uh, that says, uh, not so much. We see you as being different than the rest of us. 
you're out of consensus. Um, and then we change that one back. So um, uh, how do we build, see, and he's thinking, how do we build a network with a consensus algorithm? In other words, how do we build a, um, a blockchain that is the network? How do we do DNS on, um, uh, on blockchain, which is a project that, that, that people are working on right now? Um, in other words, how do we have uh, an immutable address or a place that people can go and talk to um, and that becomes an issue of scalability. So we're yeah. trying to, the issue is we're trying to solve a problem um, by having the network do the consensus algorithm. So you're trying to off uh, off the consensus onto the network, not on the on, not on the ledger. Okay. Um, yep. And there's a, an issue with there with scalability. People are trying to do that. I, I, I've seen uh, uh, in in private chains um, yeah. where. Uh, the consensus is a function of the the network. I think that that's a good way to do it. I think that eventually we'll get there, uh, but uh, you know who knows. Uh, I hope that that uh, 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 I hope that answers your your question. And uh, do we have one more question, Mike, or is that it? Oh, looks like uh, looks like we're out of time. But um, I yeah. think this has been a great. Uh, a great event. Uh, we had some good. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, Mike. Before we before we ended, uh, I'm not sure if we covered this, but there's two questions that sort of cover the same topic. It looks like so. There's a chat. So Chris had said, "Do you have any long term concerns about the threat of quantum computers to the blockchain?" And then someone had chimed in, "Quantum computing can end Bitcoin to blockchain." Please explain. So I don't know if you can answer that quickly, but that's the final line. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I can't answer that very quickly. I can answer that very quickly. How do I post something on the screen, Mike? Um, I have a have link. To, how do I post it? Yeah, you can. Just, if you put your, you can share your screen. If you put your cursor over there, it'll take a second. Um, to it'll probably yeah, ask you a question. I have, I have no concerns for the moment. <laughs> I have no concerns. Quantum computing will not this disrupt uh, blockchain for the moment and for the moment means not in the near and then me medium range future i am very convinced quantum computing um is a ways off number one number two um uh, the scalability and as bitcoin uh, the standard hashes the the dag file gets larger the uh, uh, difficulty gets higher uh, higher and higher and higher they've actually started talking about this and uh, there are quantum safe public key signature schemes uh, that they're yeah. already coming up with. There's an article on this on Medium, um, and I have the link. If anyone wants to email me at michael at blockchain consultants, B L O C K C H A I N consultants.io. Once again, michael at blockchain consultants.io. I'll be more than happy to share that link with you. Quantum computing is really not. Uh, um, uh, it it is a tempest in a teapot. Yeah, um, and it also it, it could support right. the blockchain, make it even safer. So on the one hand side, it can not only threaten it, but it could also be a tool to use for making blockchain safer. So it's it's on both sides. It's not only for hacking, used for hacking, but also for making it safer. So this will equal. So we, we just. Go to the next level. Upscaling. There's, there's good and there's bad, and uh, certainly quantum computing could be an interesting thing to have. Um, and there, are, you know, like I say, that's this is things that uh, that are going to change. It's uh, three thirteen. Uh, we've already gone thirteen minutes over our time. And Mike, I really appreciate uh, uh, your uh, you, your uh, giving us yes, this fine you. forum. I, I hope you guys have have really gotten a chance to, you know, talk with one another and join underneath. You can, any one of the people you can join yes. and talk to one another. Uh, I hope and, that you've enjoyed. And, uh, no, and then blockchain, Robbie, keep informed. I will, I will still be there. Okay. <laughs> blockchain, <Okay>. Robbie. <laughs> Bob, you blockchain, can, Robbie. I really appreciate you your time. Much, Mike. It was, was cool. Thank and you. Also Mike. Thank you so much. Great. Well, thank you guys. Mike. Um, Listen, um, so just a couple last things. Thank you for everyone attending. There's a couple of last minute questions that I will send over to you both uh, and yes. you'll ask them. So maybe you could address them offline. Yes. Um, we have a couple of things there. Um, yes. We thank everyone. Robbie, thank you for being a part of this. 
Uh, Michael, yeah. as always, thank you for the Thanks weekly. For uh, we'll be announcing another the next uh, the next uh, blockchain weekly event um, uh, in probably sometime today. Um, and right. then, uh, if anyone has any further questions, just email any of us, and uh, we'll be happy to help you out. And if anyone wants to run their own shindig, um, please let us know, and we will work that out with anyone here. Yeah, Thanks very much, guys. Is, congrats to shindig, shindig, shindig.com. Right. <laughs> right on, guys. Thank you very much. Okay. Thanks, Mike. Bye. Ciao.